Hi there guys, and welcome to this Plunker 88 production. I'm your host, Gareth Arch, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts, opinions, and a general overview of what I thought of Friday the 13th Part 3, or some people may call it review. I don't like using the word review, but hey ho, most people like to use the word review. So, before we go any further, I have done a review on the previous two films. In fact, that was months and months ago, and I finally literally just watched part three. You can probably see my DVD, actually it's a Blu-ray player, doing its screensaver thing with the Samsung logo going all around the place. Um, it's a good backdrop for this film. So before we go any further, please bear with me. I am currently suffering from backache. In fact, I'm off work as a result of it. Um, so I thought I'd rest up and watch some Friday the 13th Part 3. So I'm a little bit out of it. It's probably the painkillers I've taken to try and ease the back. So, Friday the 13th Part 3. Before I go any further, I would like to say I really did enjoy Part 1 and 2. However, it's been a few months since I've seen those two. So if I don't quite remember the specific scene-to-scene -scene events of the first two films, please allow me to apologise for that. So, Part 3. So... For me, personally, part three, in a lot of ways, was there were a lot of nods to the first film in part three, almost like they were trying to reboot it or reimagine it. But at the same token, there were parts of part three that felt like that was going to be the final Friday the 13th. In fact, I'm pretty sure on a number of fronts, it was going to be the last Friday the 13th, but for other reasons, eventually it's banned numerous sequels obviously just going to take a swig of uh, tea cold tea but it does the job of wetting the whistle so i think for me personally friday the 13th in some ways took a while to get going but on the flip side of that it did of course allow a bit of character development which i would say we haven't seen in previous two films so the kills or the general action took a while to get going but as a result of that we got time to get to get to better know the people who let's be honest are going to be killed the lambs to the slaughter if you will we got to better know them but as a result i suppose their deaths were a little bit more heartfelt Plus, I will say, apart from the motorcycle gang, I will say there weren't many deaths in this film that I would say we reveled in wanting to see. There are, let's just say, people in previous films which, when they died, there was maybe a quiet cheer from people. Apart from maybe the motorcycle gang, maybe Shelley, depending on which way, which way you fall upon that, there weren't very many kills in this that I would say I reveled in. Most of the kills, I was actually quite... Um, quite heartfelt to see however getting on to the kills themselves the kills were a lot tamer than the first two first two films i assume because i don't know whether this film had the involvement of tom savini or not by the way when you see um when you see one of the girls looking at a magazine when she's sat in the hammock and of course the hammock kill is actually a homage to the to the um, Kevin Bacon kill from the first film, there's actually a Tom Savini reference inside the magazine she's reading, which I thought was quite interesting. However, sorry, moving on from that, I do think the kills were a lot tamer. Half the kills you don't even see. All you see is people go into the barn or go elsewhere or go off scene, and then, you know, you hear someone yell out their name, go and find them, or rather not find them, and of course, later on, we find them dead, somehow. The kills were a lot tamer. I think the goriest part of the whole film was actually when that motorcycle gang got his hand chopped off, but the actual kill itself was actually rather tame. All we saw was Jason clubbering over the head um, when his head was off scene. A lot of the kills were a lot tamer. A lot of the just general feeling of the film, I think, was a lot tamer. Now, according to the disc I have, it is still a restricted R-rated film because I've got the region one box set but it nothing really gets screamed r-rated to me now i know over the years a lot of the friday the 13th films went through a lot of having to be cut and you know re-edited for the mpaa 
but a lot of this film just came across as not that violent, not that gory in a lot of ways, which is funny because if you didn't know, um, Friday the 13th is actually a video nasty here in the UK, which I'm not necessarily going to go into the video nasties thing right now, but I do believe the video, the Friday the 13th franchise was often considered by Mary Whitehead. Is that her name, Mary Whitehead? Um, she, of course, or was it my White House, whatever her name was, she, of course, um, was very much an advocate for banning films like Friday the 13th, and she strongly believed that Friday the 13th, um, what's the word? She strongly believed that it encouraged people to go out and kill people. Moving on from that, generally, the, the film, I would say, was entertaining, but I do believe it fell pretty much into not only a horror cliche, oh, but also fell into a Friday the 13th cliche. Now, I will say viewing this film in 2017 is very different from viewing the film back in 1983 when it was released, obviously. And of course, the amount that I, the amount of friends I have around me, that of course, have seen the film, told me about the film, spoken about the film. Of course, I know a lot of what goes in the film. I've also played Friday the 13th, the game. So maybe not a lot of it was left up, left down to surprise. A lot of it was a known, known quantity to me. So maybe that lessened the impact of the film. I don't know. The film itself was entertaining nonetheless. There was some fairly decent tension. I liked the characters in general. Um, I liked the ha fact that there was some uh, comic relief elements. Of course, Shelley was just generally a goofball. He was generally a comic relief element. Um, I actually quite like Rick. Rick was probably one of the most out there kills. The whole 3D element of the whole film obviously was rather tacky, looking back on it and through 2017 lenses or glasses, if you were. But I think the whole film in general was rather entertaining. Of course, it is the iconic film where, of course, Jason dons the hockey mask However, of course, the whole lead up to him getting the hockey mask is rather a damp squib, to be completely honest. Um, I do believe most people have said the way he acquires the mask in later films and in the 2009 remake is, of course, a lot more impactful, except in this film, it's rather... It falls rather flat because you don't see him. All you see is Shelley go over to the barn and next thing you see is Jason come back out with his iconic hockey mask. And of course, he shoots, um, is it Vera, with the harpoon gun, which again is actually quite a, uh, what's the word, quite a decent kill. And there are some, they are using the 3D effects once again to good effect. However, the whole stick in your face, rat in your face, snake in your face, wallet in your face, yeah, all of those things are rather tacky. However, the, some of the kills they use using the 3D elements are actually pretty um, interesting, well done. However, some of the other elements, like the biker gang, he gets, biker gang member who gets a pitchfork to the stomach, him holding up the pitchfork for the camera for the whole 3D effect, again, comes across as just tacky um, to me. I would probably say this film obviously i haven't seen any films past this but i would maybe watch this film as part of a marathon rather than on its own uh, there's reasons why i say that um you know some people do believe that you should watch quantum of solace and no sorry casino royale and quantum of solace back to back because they come across as far better films maybe this is to watch this as part of a marathon run on its own. Having said that, there are a lot of parts of this film that I would say are homages to the first film. You've got the whole Kamek kill, which is of course a reference to the Kevin Bacon kill. You've got the fact that Debbie puts herself out into a boat and is recovered much in the same way that um, Alice is from the first film. You've got the whole, you know, she supposedly uh, hallucinates or dreams of Pamela Voorhees coming out of the water, very similar to how young Jason comes out and supposedly does something to Alice. 
there are a lot of homages to the first film. And also some ways you do wonder where the first films went, because apart from the, you know, flashback scene at the beginning, I suppose, or the catch up scene at the beginning, there's not much to tell you that, you know, the first two films have been. What would I give it personally? I would give it a three. I'm not going to give it any more than three. I think it's a sort of an average um, horror films, horror film in a lot of respects. Um, and I think personally, because I know how the series is now going to go, I think maybe the goofier parts of the series are going to be more to my liking than these sorts of... It takes a while for the film to get going. But having said that, that that allows you to get a little bit more of character development in there before the kills start coming at you. So if you could for me, guys, leave a like or a dislike on this video, depending on your feelings. If they are more complicated or if you wish to have a discussion with me or somebody else, then please pop a comment down into the comment section down below. As I do like to say, YouTube is a social media platform. Let's make it social. Let's take it back from the trolls. And if you haven't already, you can stick around by pressing the subscribe button. You can stay up to date with what I do by pressing the bell icon. That will enable you to receive a notification to your device of choice every time I upload a video. And as always, guys, you've been a very patient and supportive audience. And until next time, please take care. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheerio.